as I've become more and more familiar with the autographs that my dad has from PCL players, managers, umpires, team presidents, ball club owners, and some of the fans, I'm finding many of these guys in both my dad's autograph book and on SEAL scorebooks. I'm starting to keep track, but it's not easy. Some of the players signed the autograph book multiple times over the years, so they're spread out on various pages throughout the book. And I still haven't opened up the majority of the SEAL scorebooks yet. Probably like 80% of them I haven't opened up. I know some of the players well enough now to tell what team the SEALs played by looking at the visitors' autographs on the covers of the scorebooks. I just did a show on the first black umpire in MLB history, Emmett Ashford, where I showed his signature in the autograph book. Recently, I noticed his autograph on a 1955 SEAL scorebook. That would have been nice to include on Emmett's show, especially since I blew the ending to his story. Forgot to put in the word umpire. Didn't say that. What a dummy I am. Can't read my own writing. Anyway, it's too late for that. But you can see all the autograph scorebooks in season two. So me and my dog, Little Otis, spent two weeks at my parents' house at the end of June there, doing some landscaping. I left the autograph book at my folks' house. The summers up here on the hill can be really hot during the summer for weeks at a time. And last thing I want to do is try to make a video and start dropping beads of sweat on Ty Cobb's autograph. So that, that'd be brilliant. So I'm creating these low-budget shows on my phone, which isn't too bad for the autograph show because instead of you staring at an autograph while I talk, you can relax and take a gander at the view over yonder and use your imagination to transport yourself back to a simpler time and really breathe in the whole story as if you were there. As I blunder my own narration because I can't read my own writing. So let's go. Gene, Kermit, Verbal, nickname Satchel. Shortstop, MLB debut, 1951. He's from North Carolina. Started playing pro ball at the age of 16 in 1945. He was a really good infielder and a hard hitter. Gene's only two stints in the big leagues came with the Washington Senators, where he played all of 1951 and part of 1953. Some of his teammates on that team were Willie Miranda, Sam Denty, Gil Cohen, and Cal Bear legend Jackie Jensen. Gene has a couple of cards, a 1952 Topps, and the 1953 Briggs Meets cards. Both show him in his Washington Senators uniform. Gene Verbal played 14 seasons of pro ball, much of it in the AA Southern Association League for the Atlanta Crackers or the Chattanooga Lookouts, who he helped lead to the 1952 championship. Some of those minor league teams got great names. I should mention those more on my show. Gene also played for the Burlington Bees, the Vicks Vicksburg Billies, and the Seattle Rainiers, with whom he helped win the 1955 PCL championship, his only year in the PCL. Some of his teammates on that squad were Ryan Duran, Vic Lombardi, Bill Kennedy, Bobby Balsena, and coach Fred Hutchinson. Gene Verbal was manager of the year twice in the Sally League, Class A ball, and his 1957 team, the Charlotte Hornets, won that league's championship. The Hornets have been around since 1892. Harmon Kilbrew played on that team. Gene also coached in the Indians' farm system, as well as the Senators' farm system, and stayed with the team when they moved to Minnesota and became the Twins. Side note, Twins wasn't the first choice for the club's name. The team owner wanted to make sure he didn't alienate his two biggest markets, St. Paul and Minneapolis, so he proposed the name Twin Cities Twins. MLB Commissioner Ford Frick said no to that name. But the commissioner did let the owner keep the logo that was designed for the Twin Cities Twins ball caps, a T and a C for Twin Cities. It wasn't until 1987 that the Twins put an M on their ball cap. They finally felt the team was established enough in Minnesota that the people wouldn't think the M stood for Minneapolis. Yeah, Minnesota Twin Cities Twins. That doesn't exactly roll off the tongue like Vegas A's. Sounds like a kid's soccer team. Good call on that decision, Commissioner Frick. And while I have you here, sir, there's a reporter from L.A. who would like your thoughts on Pride Night in MLB. Can you imagine asking Ford Frick that back in 1960? You wouldn't, because it wouldn't be an issue. Pride. A hijacked word. Used to mean one thing, now it means another. Boy, I'd like to see you explain to the Commissioner the meaning of pride now. He'd be confused, and the first thing he would say is, What? Then he'd laugh while still being a little bit confused. But when he realizes you're not joking about the new definition of pride, well, now he's downright angry. After the room is cleared and a few minutes has passed, 
He sits alone, having just gone through four of the five stages of grief. It's that fifth stage, acceptance. He just can't do it. Instead, he swaps out acceptance for sadness. And that's what he becomes, sad. Very, very sad. Sad.